the University of Michigan looked at a number of college campuses across the country, sampled close to 3,000. 15.6 came up with a depressive disorder, and by that I mean major depression or dysthymia, or an anxiety disorder, in particular panic disorder or generalized anxiety disorder for undergraduates, and 13% for grad students. And here is the, the number that's coming up over and over and over again. Only a little bit more than a third with depression uh, ever seek help. This you will find as I go through my slides today as a repeating theme. 50% with one disorder baseline, 60% had a disorder two years later. Once again, was less than half of the group seeking help. And as was mentioned in the introduction, 7% of students reported self-injurious behavior over the previous four weeks. And again, only 26% received help. So we are getting to the point where we can document these problems, but what's coming up over and over again is our chagrin about actually having the students take the initiative to get help. Another paper from uh, Dan Eisenberg's group at Michigan. Uh, and the thing that I wanted to tell you about this more than anything else was that a fair amount of uh, counseling and uh, care goes on outside of the university, which why it makes it very important that we have a continuity of care relationship with practitioners of the community. If you're in a large school, for example, like Wright State, which has about 18,000 students in it, there is no way, there is no way that we can accommodate all the kinds of care needs that we are presented with. So we must develop a liaison with community hospitals, with departments of psychiatry, who often welcome, for example, having uh, their patients treated in our outpatient clinic because the residents are required to learn how to do psychotherapy. And it's often very, very inexpensive. So the point is of this slide, a fair amount of care goes on outside of the main campus. Emory University also used that PHQ-9. and. Uh, once again, some shocking statistics. Uh, if you looked at the 729 students over a three-year period, 11% had suicidal ideation in the previous four weeks and had a higher depression severity. S close to 17% with lifetime suicide attempts and self-injurious behavior. 85% with moderately severe or severe depression or current suicidal ideation were not receiving help in this Emory study, 85%. Okay, then in the December of 2008 appeared a, a study in the most prestigious of all psychiatry journals called the Archives of General Psychiatry. Uh, this was a study by Blanco and Olson and their colleagues looking at a national survey, the uh, National Epidemiologic Survey of Alcoholism and Related Conditions, uh, which is done uh, every couple of years. It has a huge, huge number of people responding. Uh, and they began to look at a segment of the responses from the 18 to 24 year old subjects and for the first time compared them to their peers who were not attending college. Um, so uh, the thing about the study was that uh, other than it being, other than the studies I've indicated to you before, which have predominantly been self-report mechanisms, mostly over the internet, uh, this involved uh, trained surveyors. They were not clinicians, but they were trained surveyors that followed what we call a uh, structured clinical interview with significant reliability and validity. Namely, the uh, NIAAA is the National Institutes for Alcoholism and Alcohol Abuse Disorder and Associated Disability Schedule. It's based on the DSM-4 criteria for establishing mental illness. And the nice thing about this study is they looked at stressful events. This was the first one that looked at social readjustment in that way. Uh, and they found out that there were some high uh, risk. And again, we get back to the l issue of loss, the breakup. Breakup for romantic relationships, uh, loss be it through uh, death or divorce, separation. These are very, very profound issues uh, for young people. Uh, they, as you can see, they describe mental health utilization based on uh, their uh, definition in the past year uh, and substance abuse treatment based on uh, yet another um, uh, definition in the last bullet. I won't go over them, but you could see that the criteria were clear. 
And here's the take-home message on this one. Uh, as you can see, and I will spend a lot of time on this, alcohol use disorder, more than 20% of the college uh, age students met the criteria, which is interesting because it's higher than the non-college age group. Very interesting. Uh, personality disorders. There are some limitations in the study, in part because you will see they only looked at a couple of personality disorders, avoidant, dependent, obsessive compulsive, paranoid, schizoid, histrionic, and antisocial, but left out one or two that actually are, can be the bane of any college mental health clinician, namely things like borderline personality disorder and severe narcissistic personality disorder. Uh, nevertheless, nevertheless, they argue that more than 17% met the criteria for a personality disorder. I personally think that that happens to be a little bit high, but that's the, the data. Um, college students are less likely to receive treatment for alcohol and drug abuse. We have made major inroads with respect to depression and anxiety disorders. We have not made a dent when it comes to use of alcohol and drugs on campuses, despite all of the intensity, intensity of our efforts. Odds for a psychiatric disorder, the onset for a psychiatric disorder, once again, two and a half times higher after a loss after a loss. The ubiquity of loss is really, really critical. You've got a student often coming from a place far away. He loses his high school friends. He loses the support of his family. He may have lost his girlfriend or boyfriend. Um, he is having to establish an entire new social network. He's going to have to compete with a whole bunch of really talented people. And it goes on and on and on. So when you lose someone who's very important, it places you at great risk. Very important. Almost 50% of the groups had one disorder, but only a quarter, less than a quarter, sought treatment within the previous year. So we're getting this take-home message over and over again that not a lot of the students, given the frequency of the difficulties they're facing, go on to get the kind of help they need.